Forget the question, what is a woman? The real question is, is God a woman? Let's get this party started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the beginning, God created man, Adam, in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. The correct reading of scripture, which assigns male pronouns to God, absolutely enrages feminists of all woke walks of life. But don't worry your pretty little head, Rosie the Riveter. The God of Kabbalah, Ein Sof, has three female sephirah, or phases of the goddess Shekinah, hanging from its evil tree for you to worship. Meet... Athena, the mother. Deborah, the he-maiden. And Hod, the crone. They are the three goddesses of the Sephiroth. Yeah, okay. But what about Judaism? I thought it only had one male god. And definitely not one named Shivagina. Shekinah. Whatever. Since Judaism is only a cover for Kabbalah, it too has fables regarding Shekinah, that she is Elohim's consort or wife. Okay, well, how does that God's wife business work according to the monotheism of the Bible? It doesn't, Mona, and that is exactly what this video is about. I will be reading what Encyclopedia.com has published regarding Shekinah being God's bride as it has some enlightening statements. In the Talmud, the term comes to be identified as the divine presence or indwelling or presence of God in this world. And that's a problem because the Talmud is not on the same level as scripture. The word Shekinah is not in scripture, therefore it never mentions Shekinah as being the personification of God's presence. But Judaism does say that very thing. However, by the 12th century the term had undergone a radical transformation and has since been used to refer to God's feminine aspect and or consort. The Kabbalistic system, known as the Sephiro, describes ten emanations of God, what Abraham Joshua Heschel calls the inner life of God, and the tenth of these is Melkut, and is identified as the Shekinah. In this view, the Shekinah is understood to be the feminine aspect of God, not an independent mythic being. However, in some sections of the Zohar, the central text of Kabbalah, dating from about the 13th century, the Shekinah is clearly identified as God's bride. In some of these Kabbalistic myths, the coupling between God and the Shekinah is described in specifically erotic terms. The temple served as the sacred bedchamber of God, the king, and his bride, the Shekinah. The king would come to the queen and lie in her arms. He took his delight between her breasts. They lay in a tight embrace, her image impressed on his body like a seal imprinted on a page. Hmm, Lord have mercy. Is it getting hot in here? Down, girl. Other Kabbalistic myths portray a confrontation between God and the Shekinah. Provoked by the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, the Shekinah's home in this world, and the impending Babylonian exile that concludes with God's bride declaring her intention to abandon her spouse, God, and go into exile with her children, the children of Israel. Nor will she return to God until her home, the temple in Jerusalem, is rebuilt. It is in this central myth of the exile of the Shekinah that the figure of the Shekinah attains mythic independence. Thus, 
the term Shekinah undergoes a radical transformation. From one of the names of God, to the presence of God in this world, to one of the emanations of God, and finally, to God's bride. It is difficult, if not impossible, to reconcile the monotheism of Judaism with the notion of a divine consort, which more closely resembles the divine pairings of Zeus and Hera in Greek mythology, or El and Asherah in the Canaanite. Well, that answers my question, doesn't it? It does. This is one of the reasons that the study of Kabbalah was regarded as esoteric and was limited to married men over the age of 40. Mm. And why is that? Are married men over 40 immune to perversion? You're not far off. It was believed by 17th century rabbis that mature married men over 40 who already had a commanding knowledge of the Torah and the Talmud could sift through Kabbalah's mystic garbage heap without going insane. Uh-uh. You said it, Trashy. That stuff will drive you insane, no matter who you are. The exile of the Shekinah from God inspired Rabbi Isaac Luria of Safed in the 16th century to teach that heaven was in need of human assistance in bringing the divine couple back together. These teachings, known as Lurianic Kabbalah, present the concept of Tikkun Olam, repair of the world, in which God is said to have created the Jewish people in order to repair the breaches that took place in heaven at the time of the creation, at the time of the fall, and when the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Further Messianic Jewish theology holds that one of the key tasks of the Messiah will be to restore the temple in Jerusalem, at which time the God's bride will be reunited with God and the world will be restored above and below. This is a direct reference to that 1840 prophecy regarding the revelation of their false messiah. The term as above, so below is used exclusively in paganism. Meanwhile, the story of God having a wife or even the nonsense of God being a woman is mythic garbage that Judaism cooked up while exiled in Babylon. It's nothing new. It is actually a Jewish retelling of the same old Babylonian, Egyptian, Canaanite, and Grecian myths of their gods. Whereas the Christian faith is simple. There is but one God, and he is the Holy Spirit from heaven that became a man. And the only bride of the Lord spoken of in scripture is one of metaphor. And she, the nation of Israel, was indeed meant to be a faithful wife to Yahweh, but ended up being a spiritual harlot. So God divorced her and sold her into slavery in Assyria for her treachery, and then dispersed her throughout the world. Then her sister Judah followed her into spiritual adultery and was also sold into slavery in Babylon by God. But he allowed her to return to the Judean desert and Jerusalem in order to work toward removing her spots and wrinkles, that she may bring forth the one and only Messiah, Yeshua ben Yahweh, or Jesus, Son of God. This work of sanctification continues in the Church of Jesus Christ, the true Israel of God, as she is now the only metaphorical bride of God, i.e. Christ. Meanwhile, on earth, a physical man is in need of a physical wife, as the Lord, Yahweh God, decreed when our first parents were created and were brought together by God, quoting Adam, God's choice to be the head of the family and all society by extension. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for out of man she was taken. Praise Jesus! Oh, I can just see all the feminists writhing around in pain and agony. <laughs> 
Interestingly enough, the word man is within the word woman, even in Hebrew. Man equals ish, woman, isha. It's as Adam said, for out of a man she was taken. I suppose you will be addressing the subject of grammatical gender? You got it, Diane. Certain words for God, such as ruach, are feminine, and thus, this is what makes God a woman in the minds of feminists? What are your thoughts about this, Diane? Well, people tend to get confused with the word gender, especially in the world of language. I'm actually super confused. You don't say. Yes, well, languages have grammatical genders, not because the words themselves are naturally male and female or neuter, but because it is a way of classifying words, nouns specifically in language. Now, at one time, Old English also employed grammatical gender. Really? Did you know that, Earl? No! Yes. Grammatical gender was dropped in the late 13th century due to contradiction issues and for the purpose of simplification. Mm-hmm. So, modern-day simpletons and feminists are the ones who insist on trying to make a case for God being a woman based on grammatical gender and their hatred of men. Yes, it would seem so. We certainly hear a lot about misogyny, but misandry is not a word often used in the feminist movement. I'm assuming that that is the case because misandry means the hatred of men? Yes, Anita. Well, now, that should be the word of the day and be applied to every man-hating them by. Exactly, Anita and Diane. And here is a scripture that I believe helps explain the root of this deplorable feminist practice of misandry. To the woman, he said, I will sharply increase your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. That phrase, your desire will be for was used with Cain when he was being corrected by God to avoid the sin that was crouching at the door, wanting to control him. Here, it means Eve would desire to control her husband, but God decreed that Adam would rule over her. And since the feminist revelers of the Babylonian mystery religions despise men ruling over them, including God, especially since he's a he, they seek to liberate themselves of what they imagine to be toxic masculinity by taking words out of context and magically giving them genitalia, thus making God's own spirit or ruach into a literal woman. Extra, extra, read all about it. Doctors of grammar say words don't have genitals. Extra, extra. <laughs> in the Old Testament, the Lord God, who is spirit and who is holy, had no genitalia until he became a literal, natural man, the Lord Jesus Christ. After all, Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. And... <gasps> and so... The question of whether or not God is a woman should be painfully obvious and be answered with a resounding no! Well, my intrepid fellow sleuths, this concludes my investigation into the Kabbalah connection. I hope that through this investigation you have come to know what Kabbalah is, Jewish witchcraft, and... Its evil purpose is to separate you from the one true God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have been so unfortunate as to have dabbled in this spiritually fatal nonsense, 
then please take heart. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one and true Messiah, our one and only God, who became his own son, he, not she, can set you free from this sin's seductive grasp. Just reach out to him in humble and sincere repentance. Please do it today. Until the next investigation, Vianne Steele, signing out.